Joey Myers' 11th DePaul basketball team was unlike any other in recent history. With a roster unproven from nearly top to bottom, Meyer would look to his four seniors for not only performance, but leadership as well. As the Blue Demons once again prepared to tackle a schedule filled with college basketball's finest teams. I felt that early in the season that we played very well, I mean, with each other. And we played real hard. But I mean, as a senior, I wanted to come in. I, I wanted to give all my effort out for the entire year. When the curtain drew on the 95-96 season, DePaul found themselves in Chrysler Arena, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Michigan Wolverines in front of a national television audience. Here he goes, Watts looking for the three. His third of the half. <laughs> Jermaine Watts with a cold-blooded three-pointer. The game went to the wire as sophomore Jermaine Watts in his first collegiate start, put on a show for the entire nation, scoring 30 points and nearly carrying DePaul to the shocking upset win. Against Michigan, he just showed the country that he's one of the premier players, you know, not just sophomores, but players in general in the country. That was a real good growing experience for our team because you got to make them understand we could have won. You're capable of winning. Here's what we have to do to win. And, and I think they understood that, and I think they improved from it. The Michigan game began the career of Blue Demon freshman Thomas Cooper. And that career began in historic fashion as Cooper became only the fourth Joey Meyer freshman to start a season opener. And as the season progressed, it was easy to see why. Cooper turned in a solid freshman campaign, scoring 100 points while starting 16 games. Cooper's play earned him a spot on Conference USA's all-freshman team. DeMarcus Gaines played in 22 games during his freshman season, scoring his first collegiate points against the Georgetown Hoyas on national TV. Gaines is an athlete who will no doubt be a part of DePaul's bright future. After the Michigan game, DePaul rolled to six wins in their next eight games. But just before Christmas, they would face a college basketball Goliath. conference opponent hadn't beaten Bobby Knight's Indiana Hoosiers on their home floor in 11 years. And on this day, DePaul was, too, a major underdog. But the night before the game, Joey Meyer made what would turn out to be a critical decision. really thought that there was a little aura about Indiana that our young team hadn't experienced yet. And I, we, we practiced here in Omaha Hall, and I said, let's drive down there and have a shoot around, just so they get in the building get used to seeing how big it is and see the banners and, and I thought when they walked in they were doing the usual like you know kind of the aura you see that movie uh, Hoosiers and they walk into Hinkle Fieldhouse and it's so big I thought our guys were doing a little bit of that. We drove down that night and we had went in to shoot around I was just I was just like I was marveled by the I mean all the red and white of it. But as the shoot around progressed I could sense the relaxation the confidence that you know you know we're going to be ready to play. strategy worked to perfection as DePaul early on showed Indiana they were there to play. And as if out of a movie, the DePaul Blue Demons were on their way to one of the greatest wins in school history. Pressure by DePaul, they steal it. 
It's Gillette Lamp. Oh, good steal there. Anticipation by Watt. And this time down. he goes up for the jam. We saw a little fear in our eyes, and we just capitalized upon that and said, you know, we can beat this team. And as the game progressed on throughout the late second half, we just got more and more confident to the point where we said we're not leaving this building without a victory. Patton outside does hit it, and DePaul has its first lead of the game. Lost outside for three, and that's good. Singer outside is good on a three-pointer, three steps outside. We couldn't stop them, they couldn't stop us. We just kept scoring, and, and I knew we were going to have an opportunity to win because they couldn't stop Seconds remaining, the game was tied at 82. Well, I, I tell you, it's interesting when, when you, it's kind of like when you, when you have a, a, a talented point guard, you want to get in his hands and make him, let him create, and, and, and the reality of life is, Gillette was the last option on the play. I'll make it. They go to Watt, cross the 10 second line, Gillette is open, shot is good at the buzzer, and that's going to do it. DePaul has won the game. It went down, I was like, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Coach Bob Knight, the congratulations to Coach Joey Meyer. This wasn't a, uh, a practice shot, but it was, it was ugly, but, you know, hey, we'll take it. These Blue Demons have come to Bloomington and upset the Hoosiers 84-82. It was a great feeling, and, 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 and the kids were exhausted and, and, and uh, gave everything they had into it, and it's always rewarding to know you give everything you have and then you get the win on top of it. What a sophomore season for Jermaine Watts. Watts in 96 established himself as one of the nation's premier point guards. Steal there. Watts has got it with Duck trailing. Oh, I like it. Watts became only the third DePaul player since 1980 to lead his team in scoring, assists, and steals, while earning all Midwest and all Conference USA honors. He's an entertainer. He's, uh, I guess, a fan's ideal player in terms of the thing that the fans like to come and see. And night in and night out, he brought that to the table. Junior Marcus Singer continued his marksmanship in 96, leading the Blue Demons with 65 three-pointers. That total was the second best single season mark in school history. Singer started 20 games in 96 while averaging nearly 10 points a game. Marcus scored a career high 23 points in a Blue Demon win over Eastern Illinois. Juan Gay came to DePaul via Barton County Junior College and quickly became a factor in the Blue Demon rotation. Gay scored a career high 21 points against Texas while contributing nine points in the Indiana win. Gay ended his season with a scoring average of nearly 11 points per game. Charles Gillette was another junior college addition brought in to give DePaul depth along the front line. And Gillette paid early dividends. Charles scored a career high 11 points, including the winning bucket versus Indiana, while tying that mark by scoring 11 points against Maine. David Satterwhite's junior year was cut short by injury but the 6'8 forward will come back in the 96-97 season with two more years of eligibility. Satterwhite will be counted on greatly by the Demons in the years ahead. As this DePaul team, bruised and battered, made its way through the treacherous Conference USA schedule, wins were tough to come by. But despite what those scoreboards read after 40 minutes, it was plain to see that the 95-96 Blue Demons established themselves as fighters, warriors, and above all, competitors. Memphis down to 10. Watts has a screen set up, rolls off of it, needs a three, fires, and he hits the ball! Gut. I mean, this, is, this is probably the guttiest team I ever put in that word. I mean, this, this is probably the team with the most guts that I, I ever played on in my whole life. Everyone on the team, on our team, just took it upon themselves just to play hard, 
and come out and show just what you know we had personally. As the season wound down, the Demons Never Say Die attitude paid off as DePaul claimed victory in four of their final six games, including a 66-51 win over St. Louis in the Horizon Finale and a 66-60 win over UNC Charlotte in the Conference USA Tournament. That was probably the most impressive thing they did, even more impressive than the Indiana game because it was very easy, could have been very easy for them just to fold 10 and to come back and, and beat good teams down the stretch after that long string of losses shows me that they hung together and they showed some pride, showed some character. When the 95-96 season ended, so did the careers of the DePaul Blue Demons four seniors. Malik Murray finished his four years as a Blue Demon by turning in his finest season. Malik played more minutes, scored more points, and grabbed more rebounds in his senior season than any previous year. But more importantly, Malik Murray ended his DePaul career as the epitome of a student athlete. He knew he was going to get education. He knew he was going to be successful. Even if he didn't play basketball, it wasn't going to be a big factor in his life. But he does have memories to bring back with him. But he was a major contributor to the basketball program. And in his senior year, even in big games, Malik was there and made some big plays. Brian Curry wrapped up his Blue Demon career with his best season as well. Curry averaged 10 points a game in his final campaign, scoring a career-high 22 points against Louisville. Brian Curry missed only one game in his Blue Demon career and ranks third in all-time field goal percentage. Brian came to DePaul as an athlete. He leaves a basketball player. I really think his senior year, he had a heck of a year. And I, I think just like Bo, he has uh, basketball ahead of him if, if he really wants to continue with it. But uh, um, I, I really think he did develop, but I guess because of his personality, if you remember anything, you'll remember his, his uh, one-liners, his mimicking, his mocking of other people. Peter Patton in 96 wrapped up one of the most gutty, hard-nosed careers in the history of DePaul basketball. But Patton, who will always be remembered for his hustle, leaves DePaul with more marks than just the floor burns on his knees. Patton finishes his career ranked in the top 10 in five different categories including steals, assists, and three-pointers. He averaged nearly nine points a game in his final year while playing on an injured ankle most of the way. Peter Patton never missed a game in his DePaul career and will go down in history as one of DePaul's all-time greatest warriors. I think sometimes his aggressiveness, hustle, almost uh, hid the fact that he had ability. But because he'd dive on the floor, take charge, and play the way every fan and coach wants players to play, that's all they talked about. They didn't realize he was probably, until he hurt his ankle, the best three-point shooter in our league. Bryant Bowden concluded his Blue Demon career as a team captain in 96, and Big Bo was a force in the middle the entire way. Bowden averaged 15 points a game in his final season while leading the team in rebounding. Bo scored 26 against Florida State, and his 23 points against Indiana paved the way for the season's biggest win. Bowden earned all-conference and all-Midwest honors in 96, while finishing his DePaul career ranked in the top 20 in rebounding and in the top 10 in blocks. But we tease Bo a little bit being immature, but I don't know of any freshman that came in here that I would say was mature. And each year I've seen him grow until I think he really has an understanding as a player and as a person what he has to do to be successful in life. As the numbers these four seniors put up in their four years may someday be forgotten, the memories they've created will last a lifetime. I'm blessed with the opportunity to have met the guys that I've um, come in contact with over the last four years, both players and alumni and fans themselves. Uh, those are people I think I remember uh, throughout the rest of my life. I grew up with like three, well, I grew up with like two extra brothers between Malik and Brian. Pete was like a little distant brother, so like he didn't want too much to do with the family sometimes. I think I've grown personally a lot, I've matured a lot. Um, I think just the experiences of, of traveling, getting to know new people. Uh, I'm not from Chicago, so you know, experiencing the new city, I think that it's all enhanced me as a person. All four of these guys got better as players and as people, and are good, good solid people. And I, I like the, the caliber, the class of our seniors, and, and I think they're all going to be very successful in whatever route they go, just because I think they've really grown since they've been at DePaul.